Good morning, Cyberlinks, and welcome back for this digital adventure. As we discussed after the most recent PlayStation showcase, PlayStation showed off their new handheld. If we can even call it that. <laughs> Project Q, which is scheduled to release later this year. Uh, Sony, since the mid-2000s, has had several different handhelds that they've pushed into the market. Uh, back in 2005, to compete with the Nintendo DS, they launched the PlayStation Portable, or what was pretty much otherwise just referred to as the PSP. And over the years, there would be several different iterations of this handheld, introducing new features, ranging from a better display, TV output, to as well as just having a better battery life. Uh, and that was just to name a few. There were a lot of different PSPs with different upgrades that they'd made. And while the PSP never reached the sales numbers that the Nintendo DS managed, it did sell fairly well, somewhere in the ballpark of about 80 million units uh, over the course of its lifespan. And because it did well enough, uh, Sony decided in late 2011, early 2012, that they were going to launch their next generation handheld, which was titled the PlayStation Vita. While Sony never published the exact number of Vitas that were sold, it is commonly believed that there were no more than 10 to 15 million units, which was a slap in the face compared to the Nintendo 3DS sales uh, that were published at the end of its lifespan. Now, the reason for the poor sales of the Vita really came down to a handful of reasons. While yes, the Vita had many nice features that the 3DS never had or would take several painful years for them to adopt, Sony's decision for several Vita functions only hurt the sales of it even more than they were already being hurt. Uh, basically, they launched the console with proprietary Vita memory cards, which was one of their biggest mistakes by far. Vita memory cards were much more expensive than what the 3DS used, which were just standard micro or regular sized SD cards. And because of that, just for an 8 gigabyte memory card, you would be paying $30 compared to what you could get on the 3DS at the time, which was almost 16 gigabytes. And then they had the stupid idea for their 100 plus dollar 64 gigabyte model. They were only going to launch that in Japan of all places. It never quite made sense how they handled the memory card situation, to be 100% honest. And on top of the storage being expensive, the system itself was almost $100 more than the 3DS. It was an expensive console at $250, which if you converted that into 2023's current currency with its high inflation, would be over $340. To say that I'm surprised that that system sold as many as it did would be an understatement. Now, what does all of this have to do with Project Q? That's a good question. Well, it seems that Sony has learned all of the wrong lessons to their prior experience with handhelds, and they've kind of just slapped this together and given it to us. As we discussed in our last video, Project Q is launching later this year, yet it still doesn't have a proper name, which I don't quite understand, to be honest. And one of the things that they're doing with it is that they're not giving it its own dedicated library. Now, what, what, what do you mean with that? Well, it's going to rely entirely on streaming games from your PlayStation 5 to the handheld over Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's right. The whole thing is only good for that and that only. What's worse is that this isn't even anything new. As long as you've had a smartphone really within the last five-ish years, you could have hooked up a DualSense controller to that smartphone and done the exact same thing. And on top of all of that, unlike Google Stadia, which was this failed game streaming platform that Google tried to operate for a couple of years, um, having that entirely run in the cloud. Yes, you can technically play your PlayStation 5 games locally with this if you don't have internet, but you're still reliant on having an internet connection to get the games onto the actual handheld. And you still have to have a PlayStation 5. 
This is not like a game like the Logitech G Cloud, which allowed you to stream Game Pass games or GeForce Now games to a dedicated device and just pay a subscription fee. No, 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 no. This links directly to a PlayStation 5, which you have to have. And if you don't have, you need to spend the four to $600 on one. And then you need to buy this at whatever this device ends up coming up at, which we have no clue right now what it's going to cost. But my guess is probably about $300, $350. So you're telling your customer, not only are you launching a handheld that's not truly a handheld, you're telling them that they also have to have a PlayStation 5. But you're also telling them that they have to spend a thousand dollars minimum if they want to take part in this experiment officially. And I say experiment because it's truly an experiment. If all of this information isn't already upsetting, which we've talked about in detail, kind of in our last video, after that showcase that was held at the end of May, rumors began to spread in regards to the battery life of this device. Now, understand these rumors are, are truly just rumors. There's nothing confirmed by Sony themselves as of now. But the people that are saying this are also the same people that said that this device was a thing a month and a half ago, almost two months ago. Uh, that being Inside Gamer. Inside Gamer, or Inside Gaming, apologies. It's basically reporting, quote, Prepare yourselves because Inside Gamer understands that the Project Q battery life will be around three to four hours. Yep, you read that right. At least Project Q is on a brand for the dual sense having a short battery life, I guess. End quote. <laughs> I love whoever wrote this article from Inside Gaming. Thank you. You made me laugh. But basically, what they've come out and said is, is that they're what they're hearing is, is that this device will not have anything longer than a five hour battery life, which I'm going to be brutally honest is kind of unacceptable in 2023. Now I understand Sony, you know, they, they really got burned by the Vita and I can understand why they wouldn't want to do a truly dedicated handheld again. You know, the market is kind of shifting away from the, necessarily wanting to have a dedicated system i mean we saw the death of the 3ds for a hybrid console but again you're not playing dedicated games one of the thing, one of the reasons why the switch has such bad battery life is because it has to process everything that the system is doing on the switch there's generation of heat there's the processing power to actually display everything, the brightness of the screen, everything affects the battery life on something like a handheld. Now, why this is an issue, I don't know. I would expect, and I would request, to be honest, that you'd get at least five hours. I mean, again, going back to the point that we made earlier was that if you have a phone, you can already pair your DualSense controller because you have to have one because this is just System Link. I mean, you don't even technically have to spend money if you don't want to. If you just want to constantly reconnect your controller to like other or like your phone or your console or your console to your phone, you could technically not spend any money. But it's just your phone is going to have just as good, if not better, battery life than what what they're quoting here i mean i'm still really to be honest questioning why sony thought this was a good idea the fact that you have to use a ps5 for all your your game streaming is just really kind of stupid to be honest but that being said sony hey if you're listening to this which i know you probably aren't but if you are by some flipping miracle free idea here you have a newly revamped ps plus subscription service in which you allow people to stream all of these games if they're on a certain tier of your PlayStation Plus service. How about you let everyone of like five people that go out and buy one of these, how about you let them go and connect directly to the PlayStation Plus service directly from the console 
or connect to the PlayStation 5 servers. Because if you let them go and do that, okay, yes, you know, it's it's a handheld, you know, you're going to have, you're still going to be streaming the games, but at least that way you can stream all of those PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, PS2, even some of the PS1 games that you allow to be streamed to the PS5, let us connect it directly to the Project Q or whatever it is. So then that way we have actual gaming libraries to use. I mean, I for one don't have the biggest PS5 library. I don't play a lot of PlayStation 5. Back when Genshin was like the game that I played, you know, I played my I played I played Genshin on my PS5. I had a $500 Genshin machine, and that's all I used it for. So, like, I wouldn't take a big advantage of this, to be honest. And especially when most of my library, unless it's through Game Pass or PlayStation Plus, is physical games, it's not going to benefit me in any degree to have something like this. You know, it's just, it, it you, maybe this is just not how you should have developed it. I don't know, but all I can say right now is, is that this is a, this is a good doorstop. It's not a good handheld. And if you're not wanting it to be a handheld, that's fine. Then you need to change how you're marketing it because right now you've essentially just shown it to the world. You're not telling the world at all anything about it. And I think that there's a lot of general confusion and concern from the consumer and I mean, if if you can somehow turn it around and it, it, it does well, okay? And if you do what I tell you to do, which is just, again, allow it to link directly to PlayStation Plus or your PlayStation 5 console, you could have something that, that is some something interesting on your plate. Because if I can go out, if I don't have a PS5, if I can go out and buy one of these for like 250 bucks, maybe 300 bucks even, and if I can spend $10, $15, even $20 on your PlayStation Plus service, maybe I maybe I don't do console gaming. Maybe I just do handheld gaming. This gives me a way of still playing some of those PlayStation 4 and 5 games or whatever other games that you have on the service. It's still giving me a way to give you money. It's still allowing me a way to support you. So I don't know. I, I is I I'm gonna be brutally honest. I I still I, there there's just a lot that we need to be told in the next year. Not even year because it's coming out this year supposedly, which I don't believe to be brutally honest. I think it's gonna launch March or April of next year. I I'll just be brutally honest. That's where I think it's gonna go. So, um. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little bit more in-depth video. I'm sorry that my original coverage over Project Q was very haphazardly thrown together. Um, unfortunately, this happened while I was out of town and I could not sit down and actually record a proper video. Um, so I, I do apologize. I hope this makes up for it. And now that I've had a little bit of time to sit down and actually think about the topic at hand and more information is kind of starting to come out. You know, it, it, it's still very much an interesting subject. I'm, 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 I by no means want this to fail. I really don't. As much as I don't like PlayStation, I, I, I don't want it to not succeed. So, um, so yeah, hopefully, you know, people actually like it and I'm proven wrong. I, I never like being wrong, but, you know, I am wrong from time to time, so... Um, thank you guys for tuning in for this uh, digital adventure. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you enjoyed my content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, also, again, leave a comment down below on your thoughts on Project Q. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? I always love hearing your guys' thoughts. Uh, not even just about Project Q in this example. Give me your thoughts on my channel. Or what, whatever I'm doing, it is. Uh, any tips or tricks that you uh, would like me to improve upon for the content. Uh, we've got a new streaming schedule at the time of recording this going up. 
and uh, we got some cool things coming. So hopefully you guys all do enjoy and have a great rest of your night, guys. Bye-bye.